All right, great, Brad. Um, so I'll just so first I want to find out. Um, so what kind of led you to the organization? Or I wasn't sure if you're the founder or. Yeah. No, well, basically, uh, the business was started by my brother and myself, uh, probably okay. about four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, we were, you know, we both Zambian. Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking at the country we sort of live and operate in, and uh, yeah, effectively, we've uh, we're quite a low low volume uh, market. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the key sort of uh, bottlenecks to growth in our mind was the very high transaction costs. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much everything everything costs a lot of money to do. Um, so we basically looked at how we could make the biggest impact in terms of reducing those mm -hmm. um, and we focused on, on rural agriculture. 80% of the population uh, is involved in, in agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people earning very little money um, and really struggling to sort of get by. So we felt if we could uh, really come up with the solutions that could actively mm -hmm. sort of facilitate uh, an ability to get people you know, transacting at lower costs that could sort of stimulate growth and also just help at a day-to-day at a -day level. Eh? Great, great. So what kind of values did you want your organization to uphold? Um, essentially, we, we very much focus on getting things done. You know, okay. we, are a, we are a commercial entity. Uh, we don't like talking, we prefer doing. Mm -hmm. um, we also, you know, we also uh, are very focused on who our, who our end customers. You know, it is okay. people with, with not a lot, so we try and be quite humble and uh, have a fair amount of humility. Uh, we very much also are a solutions-based organization, mm -hmm, so you definitely. know when people when people want to come to us, staff, customers, whatever. If you've got a problem, find a solution. Um, yeah, and I think just also just making sure that we've got an organization where it's, it's good to work with and it uh, encourages mm -hmm. people to come forward with the uh, ideas and progress. Great, great. Um, so that seems like kind of a, a big issue that <laughs> you guys are trying to fix. Um, so what do you think one of a couple of your biggest yeah. challenges were when you first started this? I think probably one of the main issues we felt was uh, is, is, is our own ignorance. I think we certainly okay. felt we could make a bigger impact sooner than we did. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've, we've learned that you, know, you can't just go into a community with what you think is the answer. And even if it is the answer, mm -hmm. you can't impose it. So we've really right. had to take a step back and almost try and go, uh, understand how we can make rural farmers uh, really get an understanding of what we're trying to do you know, mm -hmm. within their social framework. So you know, they, they've got a lot of issues with trust, um, right. you know, they, they, they're exposed to a lot of risk in their own lifestyles Definitely. in terms of weather or, or predator pricing or lack of input. So mm -hmm. almost trying to gear up our solutions to what they need. So we've almost taken a step back. You know, we started off probably trying to go direct to the, the rural farmer. We've now almost gone back to the beginning. We've found the source of the money that companies need to have okay. to pay these farmers. They then make payments to the farmers. Um, the farmers then will get comfort that there's some trust going on, mm -hmm. and then only over a period of sensitization and sort of progress will we get them transacting okay. and getting the full benefit of the system. Okay, great. Um, so since since then, how have you kind of seen that progress? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, from a financial perspective, it's it's gone well. You know, we mm -hmm. we now generate. We've got a good value proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, we've built a, a large amount of uh, agent. Uh, which is literally just small uh, retail shops in the in the mm -hmm. communities at a grassroots level. So right now we've got more uh, banking agents than the whole banking sector of the country mm -hmm. put together. Um, so yeah, it's it's making very sound progress. We're getting good transactions across the platform. So it's great, working. great. Um, so okay, so you I feel like you guys have made so much progress in the past four years. Um, so maybe in the future, mm -hmm. where do you kind of see this going? Do you, do yeah. you feel like you, there's you're going to be expanding a lot, and how do you yeah. how do you plan I think, no, on doing definitely. That? I think it's got to be replicable and, mm -hmm. and scalable. So I think certainly, I think the one thing we would s is is walk before you run. So mm -hmm. I think we really got to button down our proof of concept in Zambia. I think sometimes it's easy to talk about what you do. It's a bit more difficult to do it. So I think we've, yeah, I think we've got a good product. We've got a good idea. I think we really just want to really button down and implement it well. Mm -hmm. And once we've got that working like clockwork, then we'll look at uh, scaling up in other markets. Okay. Okay. Great. Do you have any plans on expanding outside of Zambia, maybe? Uh, we're in Zimbabwe already, and we're okay, looking great. at Malawi. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So how did you choose these markets? Um, I think they've got similar similar sort of uh, sort of um, trends to what we're doing in Zambia. They are agricultural focused. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a high dependency on cash, um, and they are geographically close to us. So in terms of capacity, it was a lot easier to go there than to, to go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds great. Um, so other outside influences, do you think? Because like you said it was you and your brother yeah. who yeah. started this. So yeah. anyone else in no, particular no, very, that has, very, I'm sure very, you've no, had a lot of support? Much, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, 
I mean, essentially now, um, you know, I'm now the the almost like the new the new channel development, and my mm-hmm. brother is the the IT new product development. Okay. So we're no longer call it the general manager or the financial manager of the business. Okay. So we have brought in skilled people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Quinn, who who works with us in Zambia, right. is now a partner with us in the business. I think he actually came to Zambia with a working relationship with GBF. So mm-hmm. I don't know if we poached him or he, he got clientitis. <laughs> but so yeah, we've we've worked hard to get skilled people in the organisation sort of to put uh, the mm-hmm. right the right cogs in place. Eh? Sure, great. And then since it's GBF, I have to ask, um, how do you think? I guess working with us has has it maybe improved or changed I think the way f- you all first up, I think. Uh, you know, in terms of fundraising, you gave us money before most people would, mm-hmm. so there was a bit of a leap of faith in, in that part of, with you guys. Um, I think the other thing is, is technical assistance. Um, you know, you have added, added, added sort of significant value at, at certain times. I think one thing I am learning is that uh, communication on both sides could be better, mm-hmm. um, and then that gets alignment, and then you, you work more closely together. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think certainly there's a willingness and, and intent on both sides to get that right. Um, right. So on the whole, I would say it's been a very positive relationship. Great. So what do you think the, I guess if you could pick one aspect mm. that has, do you think has added the most value mm. to MCL? What do you think? Um, well, in our case, you, there was one specific technical assistant program mm-hmm. uh, which brought Mike Quinn to Zambia. So mm-hmm. in, terms of, in terms of getting a really good skilled resource who spent enough time in the environment with us to make a difference. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think if, if sometimes if technical assistance is is too quick and not structured, it can actually be a bit counterproductive. Right, I think definitely. if you have the, the right person for the right amount of time right. with the right sort of uh, terms of reference, mm-hmm. you, can have, you can add real value. So the right fit is Absolutely. definitely key. Yeah. Great. So this seems like a pretty difficult you know, area that you're working in. So what do you think your, the most rewarding experience for you has been? Well, the most rewarding for me was starting to break even. <laughs> so from <laughs> a purely financial point of view, um, you know, that was it. Yeah, I do understand though there's a, there's a, there's a social element to it, so we mm-hmm. really are impacting people's lives positively at a right. grassroots level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for us to be sustainable, we've got to make money, um, mm-hmm. and we are a business. So I think certainly the most sort of, you know, the, the, the best moment for me was almost realizing we had good people in the organization that could run the business well mm-hmm. um, and generate enough income to cover costing. Great. All right, great. Um, I'm trying to think, anything else you want to? say about oh, MCZL that we don't know? Okay, yeah. great. Well, thank you all so right. much for your time. No problem at all.